1974, the Cuban government imprisoned thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses for advertising American propaganda that promised God would destroy their government in the year 1975. The Cuban government was even more displeased when they realized Jehovah's Witnesses in Cuba were selling their properties and sending all their money to the United States. By this point, Jehovah's Witnesses were seen as doomsday fanatics who mailed untaxed donated funds to the U.S. Prison sentences ranged from six months to 12 years. Jehovah's Witnesses strongly believed Armageddon would come during the first year of their sentences. But once 1975 came and went, a small minority among the incarcerated Jehovah's Witnesses would become disloyal to the organization and denounce their faith in order to shorten their sentences. But the majority of the incarcerated Jehovah's Witnesses loyally served their torturous sentences regardless of the fact that they were lied to by their own religion. This was a persecution heavily instigated by the false Watchtower prophecy. Soon after they were released from prison, a large number of Jehovah's Witnesses tried to escape Cuba illegally. It was a common belief that those who attempted to escape persecution in Cuba were imitating Jonah when he avoided going to Nineveh. Those who escaped or attempted to escape Cuba were reproved for their cowardly and disloyal actions. Those who didn't show signs of repentance or attempted to leave Cuba again were disfellowshipped. It was also seen as disobedience to the law of the land if you left the island illegally. The Watchtower always blames world governments for the persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses. Watchtower doctrines and teachings gradually change and they move on without taking into consideration the damage it has caused. They expect a steady flow of donated money from members in poor countries. They expect members to blindly obey even if their lives are gravely affected. All Watchtower does for the poor is mention their experience in publications and use them as a sign of the end. If Jesus Christ came to earth in our day, would he ignore his hungry followers for the sake of having a multi-billion dollar religion and tens of thousands of empty properties around the world? Would Jesus lie to his followers, watch them go to prison without reason, and then disfellowship them for refusing to suffer?